What's going on, everybody? It's week four in the NFL. Week three saw a lot of different crazy stuff like the Chicago Bears making a name for themselves by embarrassing the Atlanta Falcons on national television. And the Dallas Cowboys pretty much showing why they're the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, let's get right into it. We've got a Thursday night matchup, which is going to be one of epic proportions between two absolute juggernauts in the AFC. It's the Denver Broncos and the New York Jets with a combined record of 0-6. And the Broncos are starting Brett Rippin? Ripin? Making his first career start in the National Football League? Um, yeah, this is not good. So, if Sam Darnold and the Jets can't get a win here then there's something seriously wrong in New York. And with that being said, I just, I like Denver, and I like their roster overall a lot better. If they can get Brett Rippon into, into a rhythm and get him making short throws, easy completions, and, and really just be a game manager, don't do too much, don't turn the ball over, then they've got a shot. So, I, I'm i actually going to pick Denver in this game. They don't have either of their two starting quarterbacks, I do believe. So, it's down to Brett Rippon. And I, for one, am going to take Denver. Then on Sunday, we have the Chargers and the Buccaneers. Joey Bosa is one of three players in the league right now with one sack or more in each of the first three games of the season. Um, Tampa Bay has looked kind of up and down. They have yet to have a, a truly dominant performance against a good team where I'm like, okay, yeah, they're for real. So there's still a lot left to be desired out of the Buccaneers. And I mean, we all know the talent that they have and what they can do. And, um, obviously we've seen what Los Angeles can do with Justin Herbert in that defense. Uh, it's it's kind of an intriguing matchup, honestly. It's it's a rookie versus a 20-year veteran in the league. And when you look at the, the talent of both teams, you'd probably be inclined to pick Tampa Bay because they have the bigger names and the bigger stars. But I'm saying don't rule out a Los Angeles, come, or a Los Angeles uh, upset victory. I'm not going to pick them in this game. I'm still going to pick Tampa Bay. But, lo and behold, I would say uh, the Chargers aren't necessarily a team to be written off right off the jump. So, I will give this one to Tampa Bay. Then we have Seattle and Miami. Seattle is 3-0 for the first time since 2013. That's insane. I find that extremely hard to believe. Um, they're so good offensively, defensively, that they're, they're all right. Uh, they certainly need to play better in the secondary, but there's always room for improvement on every NFL team. And Russell Wilson is 100% playing at an MVP level. I don't think there's a quarterback not named Aaron Rodgers that's playing better right now. I just, I love Seattle all the way around. Woo. And uh, Miami, they are struggling. And I know they just picked up a win, but they were playing Jacksonville, so that wasn't really wasn't really a, a very hard thing for them to do. Somebody had to win that game, and I don't think Jacksonville was going to win it. So it makes sense to me. Miami won last week, but they have a very, very, very tough challenge ahead of them. Is this a trap game? For Seattle, perhaps? An extremely overmatched Dolphins team coming into town? Um, I don't know. I'm Well, I mean, I do know who I'm picking, but I don't know exactly if this is a trap game for Seattle or not. But I'm going to pick the Seahawks because on, on paper and statistically and just from the eyeball test, they should win this game and they should win it pretty handily. Then we have the Colts and the Bears. 
So this is Chuck Pagano's first team, first game versus his former team. Um, and unfortunately, I don't think it's going to much matter. Uh, because I think the Colts are going to win this game. Uh, yeah, Chicago's 3-0. and But who have they really beaten to where you're like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think they would have been 3-0 if they had started Nick Foles. I don't think that any of this success can be attributed to the play of Mitchell Trubisky. Um, because clearly last week's game wasn't. He was benched, and then they brought Foles in, and then you saw what happened. Foles led them all the way back. And um, it's just kind of a crapshoot for me in in Chicago. They're like the Among Us meme. They're the one imposter among all the 3-0 teams. Uh, and uh, in Indianapolis, while we've seen the high and low from them this year, I still like the consistency of Phillip Rivers a lot more um, than, than I like the consistency of of regular season Nick Foles. So I will pick Indy in this game. Then we have the New Orleans Saints and the Detroit Lions. The Saints have not lost three straight games since weeks 1-3 in 2016. And I mean they're honestly going to stare it in the face. I just don't get why Josh Allen's so inaccurate in Madden. I just I gotta point that out. That's ridiculous. Whatever. Um, but they, uh, the Saints stare a one and three start right in the face because while Detroit hasn't looked necessarily impressive or very good to the first three weeks of the year, they did beat a significantly better Arizona Cardinals team last week, and they they forced Kyler Murray to make some errors. And a lot of people view it as oh well. Kyler Murray played bad, so the Lions were good. It's no, I mean Kyler Murray played very well. They just forced uh, the the Lions defense just forced Kyler Murray into these bad situations, uh, which is a mark of a good defense. So I don't know. The Saints really have to figure out how to throw the deep ball because clearly we saw against um, against Las Vegas and against Green Bay that the short game is not going to work. I mean, when Alvin Kamara is the fifth leading receiver in the NFL, then there's a problem. It's because you have to throw checkdowns, and yeah, sure, he can he can run after the catch, but it's not necessarily attributing to anything. So people like to gas up Alvin Kamara talking about how he's one of the best in the league, but he's, I mean, any, any running back is going to do that when your entire offensive repertoire is throwing screens and having him in pass pro with an option to throw the ball. Um, I mean, I just, I, I don't like New Orleans. I said this in week one, and I will repeat it. They're snake oil merchants. I, and I don't get how anybody can look at that and say, no, no, you're wrong, you're wrong. They might win this game. In fact, they probably will. And it's probably going to change the narrative. Whew, sorry. <laughs> it's probably going to change the narrative about them. But it really shouldn't. The narrative needs to stay the same. They cannot win big games. And they cannot win without throwing the check down. And they even mentioned this uh, against, against Green Bay in the Sunday night game. That... Yeah, while that's pretty much all they do, it's still effective. And it can't be your entire offense, though, because, as we've seen, they get into the playoffs and then they lose. Because they beat, or they, uh, they will be matched up with teams that are vastly superior to them. And then you see all these Saints fans talking about, oh, next year's our year, next year's our year. It's like, okay, do you give Drew Brees a miracle serum to... Give him arm strength back so he can throw the ball 50 yards down the field? No, it's not going to happen. Drew Brees is washed up. I think that goes <laughs> without saying. Uh, just kind of ridiculous to me that 
that we're still talking about the Saints as one of the elite teams in the NFL. The media really does a lot for certain teams to keep them in the national spotlight. So it's, uh, it's kind of ridiculous. But I, I am going to pick the Saints in this game just because my reputation depends on it. Woo-wee! If I could stop yawning, that'd be really nice. You guys are probably sick of listening to me yawn in videos, but, you know, I like the authenticity. I don't like cutting out me being me. Just just seems un, just seems not right. Um, but yeah, the Saints are probably going to win. I'm going to pick them, but my, my heart says Detroit. My head says, I mean, it's probably going to be the Saints anyway. So, there you have it. Then we have the Vikings and the Texans. <laughs> Both of these squads are 0-3. Who would have thought? And Deshaun Watson is 4-5 and in his career versus the NFC, which includes losing to the New York Giants once. So, if that doesn't tell you anything, then I don't know. But that's not exactly attributed to Deshaun Watson. Let me just point that out there before people start, you know riding him or whatever. I love Deshaun Watson. He's my second favorite quarterback in the league. Only behind only Aaron Rodgers. That's that's how it goes for me. Favorite quarterbacks, it's Aaron Rodgers, Deshaun Watson, and who knows who else. But this is like the team's struggles are not on Deshaun Watson. They have no damn team. How are you going to trade away your best offensive player and then Look yourself in the mirror and say, oh, I don't know why we're 3-0. I don't know why we can't play better football. I don't know why our receivers can't go up and catch the deep ball. It's like, oh, because you traded away your best deep ball player for a bag of deflated chips that were expired 30 years ago. I mean, yeah, David Johnson has a touchdown or two, but what the hell? Two David Johnson touchdowns is not worth... One DeAndre Hopkins touchdown. Should not have happened. In Minnesota, they're just on the struggle bus with with no no help to get out. <laughs> uh, they've got a long ways to go before they can be reasonably competitive. And they were involved in the in the Titans game last week. So who knows? This game might get delayed because of the the coronavirus tests that were positive in Tennessee so we'll we'll see if this game will be played on on Monday or Tuesday which is the current talks with the uh, with the Tennessee game but hopefully nobody in Minnesota tests positive for this damn thing so we can play some football on Sunday but I, I'm picking Houston they have to get a win they have to and and they've started like this before they sputtered out of the gates and still made the playoffs it's it's historically not in their favor but it can be done so, uh, I'm going to pick Houston. Then we have Jacksonville and the Bengals. Cincinnati's allowing 154.1 yards per game uh, since 2019. That is the most in the NFL. And Jacksonville's had a decent-looking running game. So, maybe something to watch there. Um, I, I like Jacksonville in this game. I'm just going to say that straight up. However... I don't think they're going to win. I think this is finally when we see it happen. This is Joe Burrow's first NFL win. It's going to come against a absolutely pathetic Jacksonville Jaguars team. But I think Joe Burrow will throw just enough checkdowns to get the ball in the end zone more times than Gardner Minshew can. I'm picking Cincinnati. Then we have the Arizona Cardinals and the Carolina Panthers. Kyler Murray has thrown an interception or more in each of the opening games this season. He's one of five quarterbacks in the league to do that, including fellow sophomore Daniel Jones. And I do believe that these are the patented sophomore slumps. And don't think either of those quarterbacks are bad. Um, obviously, Kyler Murray is a very good quarterback. He's just going through the... Uh, he's going through the rigors of the sophomore season. Uh, obviously, defenses are going to key in on him more. We saw with even even some of the greats like Patrick Mahomes. 
He threw 50 touchdowns in his rookie year, and then, what, 25 the next? And, yeah, they won the Super Bowl, but... There's a, a lot of blame being put on Kyler Murray that's unjust because he is still very, very good at what he does. And he's among the best in the league. So I'm gonna pick uh I'm gonna pick Arizona. I haven't seen anything. Ooh. I walked right into that one. I haven't seen anything out of Carolina that really says Hey, this is a good team. So I have to pick Arizona. I just and until Carolina can show me otherwise, to me they're a bottom feeder in the NFC. So then we have the Browns and the Cowboys. Mike McCarthy is undefeated in his career at AT&T Stadium going back to Packers head coach. So I mean that's going to change, right? That's got to change. This defense in, in Dallas is, is pathetic. And, I mean, when your best player is Alden Smith, who's been out of the league for more than five years, I mean, your your defense has a problem. And it's not just the fact that they don't have Leighton Van Der Esch anymore. That, that really has nothing to do with it. They have a lot of issues across the board, including offensive issues like their quarterback turning the ball over. Um, which people don't like to talk about, but whatever. Um, Cleveland Cleveland pretty much has to win this game to prove to the national media that they can hang. And if they do that, then they might be on pace for a playoff berth. Ooh, Cleveland in the playoffs. I've said this every year for however many years. Uh, but they need to start proving it. Like I'm not going to call them a playoff team until they have eight wins or until they have nine wins and how do you get there you got to beat the teams you're supposed to beat who are they supposed to beat the Dallas Cowboys the Cowboys are bad they're bad right now just like the rest of the NFC East they're an easy game if you are playing an NFC East team and you see one of their names pop up on your schedule you have to love it and you have to put forth everything you can because you know if we lose to this NFC East team, oh boy, there's something critically wrong with our football team. So I'm picking Cleveland. They have to win this game. And it's Baltimore and the football team. Baltimore has 100-plus rushing yards in 26 straight games. Yeah, they were they were manhandled on Monday night by Kansas City. And it didn't look pretty. Lamar did not look like an MVP. Lamar looked like a guy who was trying to do too much because he will never escape the shadow of his opponent, Patrick Mahomes. And unfortunately for Lamar, he's going to have to figure that out quick because the only way to stop the comparisons with with uh, Patrick Mahomes is to go out there and win a Super Bowl. And he hasn't even won a playoff game. And Patrick Mahomes' first season as... Oh, I'm sorry, and, and earlier when I mentioned the sophomore slump thing with Patrick Mahomes, yeah, I know he played one game in his rookie year. I don't necessarily count that as his quote-unquote rookie year. I'm, I'm saying his first full season was like his rookie season, and then his second, actually his third, was his sophomore. So you know what I mean. But, yeah, I mean, Lamar's got a lot. A lot riding, a lot against him. And Patrick Mahomes in his first full season, won a playoff game, beat Indianapolis. And Lamar Jackson has played two teams in the playoffs that he has no reason to have lost to. I believe it was the Chargers and then Tennessee. And this this team's got a lot that they need to look in the mirror and figure out. So... Luckily, this is a, a good game where you can where you can rebound and, and really kind of show yourself. Uh, like I said, if you see an NFC East team on your schedule, you're happy. And they're going to beat up Washington in this game. So I've got quite a few games to go. Not a lot of time to get through them, so I'm going to kind of run through these games pretty quick now. Uh, we've got the 0-3 Giants and the 2-1 and Rams at SoFi. Uh, the Giants are, are very, very bad, unfortunately. 
And I don't see us getting a win against Los Angeles, so I'm going to pick the Rams. And then we have the Bills and the Raiders, the game you're seeing. Uh, I don't understand how Josh Allen is so inaccurate in Madden. I don't think that the people that make this game have ever watched an actual game of football. Um, but that's pretty obvious because you play Madden every year, and it's a steaming hot pile of garbage. And one that I did not pay $60 for, mind you. I got this game through EA Play for free on my computer because I enjoy other titles from them like Battlefront and The Sims. So Madden is just an extension of a subscription that I already enjoy paying. Uh, I don't give... I'm not going to give this company money for this broken garbage product anymore. It's ridiculous. But I'm going to pick the Bills... Okay, yeah, I'm going to pick the Bills. Then we have the Patriots and the Chiefs. Unbelievable. I cannot believe we're already seeing Patriots-Chiefs again. That's going to be so fun. Uh, I'm actually going to pick New England in this game. Just Kansas City still really... And I know I'm going to say this and then immediately I'm going to have it thrown back in my face when they prove me wrong. But they just haven't shown me a complete game yet. Like, a truly, truly complete game where they look excellent on both sides of the ball. Uh, and you can say whatever you want about their performance on Monday night against against Baltimore. I, I still didn't really feel, feel like I saw enough. And you're probably wondering, well, what do you want to see? I want to see them shut the Patriots down completely. Like, not even give them an opportunity to be in the game. Be the, the Chiefs of old and score 50 points and like ha hang a 50-burger on them. Do something. Prove that you're still the dominant force you were a year ago. Go out there and just and just freaking do it. Just kill them. I swear. So, I'm going to pick New England in this game because just the consistency. They've looked the exact same. I think they've gotten very, very... I think they've gotten better in every game. So, I like New England. And then the Eagles and the 49ers. The 49ers are playing their fourth straight game against a winless team. And it will result in another win for San Francisco. The Eagles are pathetic. Then we have the Falcons and the Packers on Monday night. So that game is 0-3 versus 3-0. Green Bay scored 35 or more in each of their first three games. And Atlanta has blown a lead in the fourth quarter uh, of their last two games. It's a recipe for disaster for Atlanta, and it's going to result in another loss. I'm going with, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going with Green Bay. And then the game that has already been postponed, the Steelers and the Titans, the game will be played on either Monday or Tuesday, depending on the test results from the Tennessee Titans uh, in regards to the coronavirus. So... It remains to be seen. I kind of like to see a game on Tuesday. I kind of like to see a Monday, a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday slate of games. That'd be kind of cool, right? Uh, unfortunately, it has to happen under these circumstances, but I think that'd be kind of cool. Either way, I'm going to pick the Steelers. I just think offensively, they are more of a presence than Tennessee on offense. And... Tennessee still really hasn't shown me the means to 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 beat guy to beat teams and to win them effectively and convincingly. Uh, the way they kept Minnesota in the game last week really really spoke to me. So I'm gonna pick the Steelers in this game whenever they play it, whether it's Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or on the moon. I don't much care. I'm gonna pick the Pittsburgh Steelers. So there you have it. That's week four. I hope that you guys stay safe. Uh, wash your hands, wear your face mask, enjoy some football, do all that nice stuff. And I will catch you guys right back here for week five predictions next week.